first of all, I will check there is enough water here in the bottle attached to the video processor and also the suction apparatus is ready. I am able to see an image in the monitor and the three important functions as well as the buttons are concerned as you can see there are two buttons the superior button and the inferior button this is for the suction of course the superior one the inferior one is a dual function that is namely it will as you put a hand there and it will insufflate as you can see it does what we call insufflation of air helps to distend the esophagus and stomach next if the same button if you press hard it will instill water so it will clean the lens. This dual fun function has to be checked. And of course we need to check the superior button as you can see again in my left hand. And I am checking and the water is sucking. So once you are happy that the instrument is working, then what we do is we will explain to the patient, check the patient is okay, no denture, see faster, and then spray with either xylocaine or sedate the patient. Then put a mouth guard to protect her teeth and see how my assistant is holding the patient. Okay, so my man. So it has to be held with a victory sign and her hand on the occiput, and there should be another restraining nurse, and we should have an assistant, minimum three people along with me, and to see how I am posturing myself comfortably in front of the patient, how the trolley is stationed. They are all essential for good execution of the procedure, and comfortably hold the scope in your left hand, embrace the scope with your two fingers, engage your two important fingers that is the, the top that is the index finger over the suction button and the middle finger over this dual function inferior button. The very important hand as far as I am concerned for successful navigation is your right hand holding the scope around 20 centimeter level so they are able to talk the scope clockwise and anti-clockwise. So this is the essential function. So once you are ready then you proceed and look at my hand and also momentarily look at the monitor to see the various landmarks we are about to witness. I am just placing inside the mouth. First important thing as you can see the monitor is the tongue at 12 o'clock position. I am just going to start you know, obese patient with a big tongue. It may be see. You can see this is what you want to see. A glimpse of epiglottis. Then go behind that epiglottis. then you will be entering the esophagus beyond the pharynx. Now, as far as the esophagus is concerned, you have to, the levels are important, the three important numbers namely 15, 25 and 40. And as you can see the scopes here carefully, you can see 25, 30, 35, 40. So we are more or less at 25 level. That's where sometimes you will see the arteriosa left bronchus causing an impression. So here you can see a faint impression here in this patient because of the bronchus there. Okay. So sometimes in a thin patient it will be much more prominent. As you come down at 12 o'clock is your anterior wall of the esophagus. Sometimes the pulsation of the left atrium can be seen, transmitted pulsation you can see coming. I mean, and posturally this is the area, there is a posturally against the spinal vertebral column. When they do a poem procedure, sometimes they can do a posterior myotomy or sometimes even anterior myotomy. So your orientation is quite vital in some therapeutic intervention. As we go further down, you will be able to appreciate at around 40 centimeter the transition zone or a Z line where the squamous changes into columnar epithelium. As you can see again here, we are reaching more or less close to 40 centimeter that is the hiatus. So here as you can see the hiatus and the Z line, both are the same level, it is widely fabulous, I am able to enter and recognize that we have entered the stomach by recognizing the multiple longitudinal rugal folds and there is no water or a food collection or a fluid collection in the fundus, so if there is any fluid you need to suck it out, otherwise you have to walk your way towards 3 o'clock in your monitor, if you see at 9 o'clock it will go towards the fundus and 3 o'clock is the way you have to go. For that, you have to watch my left hand. I am going to do three important movements. One, turning the big wheel towards me, pushing the scope, at the same time talking the scope clockwise. Again, if you are gone about 5 centimeters, little bit more 
big wheel towards you, talking if necessary, otherwise just push, that alone is sufficient. Then you will be recognizing that you are walking along the greater curve at 6 o'clock position. This is anterior wall, posterior wall at 3, and you will faintly see sometimes the lesser curve at 12 o'clock, but we will see the lesser curve only on our way out. Our route of journey is what we call a long route. So we will be going along the long route, try to identify the pylorus which is now coming into view, but as you can see the pylorus is not facing me, it is just facing towards the 9 o'clock. So if it is end facing pylorus, if the pylorus is brought right at the center of the screen, that is the ideal pylorus for easy intubation into the duodenum. Let us try. So for that what you need to do, you have to patiently go close there and then with a gentle movement you will be able to enter, see now pylorus is more or less center and very often you will be able to enter the first part then eventually even to the second part. Entering the second part of duodenum, I will tell you what I have done different. Look at me, initially I was looking at the patient, now I started looking more towards the monitor, even sometimes I will show my back to the patient. So that way I can ensure the scope will remain in the duodenum. So you have to show your face back or you have to look at the monitor in order to keep the scope inside the D2. Next important thing is the big wheel will be completely flexed towards me and the small wheel is away from me that is the right word. And the other important thing I am doing, you keep watching the scope now. I am pulling the scope and the number you have to carefully watch. Now 80, now slowly it will become 70 and it will become 60 in a minute and you will start seeing the circular valvulae conventis and one of the longitudinal fold here as you can observe usually at 9 o'clock position where you will see sometimes the ampulla waiter. This being an end viewing scope, not always you will be able to appreciate ampulla but if it is able to be seen, it is usually seen at 9 o'clock position. And as you pull further, the scope will drop by short route back into the D1 and the pylorus. What I do is I take control of the scope, gently bring it back to the ansum. While you are in the ansum, you appreciate the minimum amount of redness that is a mild gastritis. You are able to see the pylorus. If you haven't seen satisfactorily D1, you can always re-enter and examine. This is the anterior wall of the duodenal bulb, recognized by speechless position. And this is the posterior wall. So anterior wall at 9 o'clock, posterior wall at 3 o'clock. The way to appreciate is very simple, turn your body. And now I am looking at the patient, so anterior wall is better seen. Now I am looking at the monitor, I am able to see, I'm, as I turn right, more to the right, I will be able to appreciate the posterior wall. Anterior wall and posterior wall. So that is the one way of easily. Now I am staying long enough, and this is the commonest site of any acid peptic disease changes. Then slowly I come out back into the ansum. Now I am going to travel along the short route, witness the important another landmark and that is the incisor of father. You watch my finger, I just to do a little flick of my big wheel towards me, then you will be able to witness some bridge-like structure, usually stretching from around 8 or 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock position. There is a commonly you see some ulceration. If you completely do rotation or a twisting of this big wheel towards you, then take the sap and do what we call anti-clockwise rotation, pull, 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 pull like that and you will be able to witness the body, then the fundus and even the cardia and all you have to do is do what we call a 360 degree examination by doing a to and fro movement like that including so your body movement, your hand movement, keeping the uh, wheel in the J maneuver like this then you will do a complete thorough examination as you can see here. It is a very nicely gripped scope. So there is no hiatus hernia or lax. So the, I think the hiatus is quite competent in this case. So we will just take it out. The last thing we need to do is what we call a distensibility test. Look at the screen now. There is hardly any rugal. Then I just suck. And as I suck here, and the rugae are formed nicely now. And as I insufflate one more time, then again the stomach distance as fast as it did. So this is, we need to test in order to exclude line and dysplastica. And the last thing is, again you just suck all the fluid and in the meantime, we keep an eye on the patient. Patient is comfortable. If necessary, we will keep a monitor. 
and keep withdrawing the scope and back into the proximal stomach. Now is the Z line and look at my right hand. I'm just keeping very close to the patient's mouth so that I have a better control. If you keep it here, you may not have a good control. So keep walking about two or three centimeters at a time. Start sucking as and when required so that the patient is comfortable. And if it comes around 15, see we are around 15, then just a flick, look at my hand again, just towards you a little bit like this, then you will be able to witness the vocal cord. You will be able to have a glimpse of vocal cord, if you are lucky. This patient of course is not tolerating, as I said, to be space slightly sometimes difficult. Anyhow. Now we are coming back and you will be able to appreciate the uvula, tongue at 12 o'clock position, soft palate at 6 o'clock position and take the scope out. Then what we do is keep it like this, do what we call pre-cleaning, that is just externally wipe the whole scope, take all the saliva, then suck fluid around 200 ml. Then antiseptic about 10 or 20 ml. Then you wipe with antiseptic outside. Brush it Then what we need to do is we need to put a brush through the access channel and also suction channel. So for that we have a brush as you can see here. This brush, it will go both through the access channel and also the suction channel. If you go through this suction channel, it will go through the umbilical cord. First you go all the way in. As you can see, it has already come there. It has come through this. So you are cleaning this part now. So what you do is, when you take the thing, you go what we call to and fro movement to and fro, to and fro, to and fro like that. So if you do that, most of the time there will be collection of all the proteinous material that will be all cleaned. Then once you have done that, then again you go in here. Then once you clean that all, then you are happy. Then what you have to do is, You take a disinfectant solution, if it is available, you can put it here, then you can just flush this in here. So brushing, flushing, both are important. Once you have done that, then you take it and immerse in a disinfectant solution for about 10 minutes. Then you talk to the patient, get the report done, report for the patient. Then you give a report to the patient.